My guest on the phone today and I will deal with a theme that will be somewhat of a departure from my usual Occupy-centered interviews in that she is neither an occupier nor a protester, but she definitely qualifies as an activist and the subject we will explore, which is the outside artist and her work in that world, will definitely resonate with those of you in the Occupy movement. Um, who hasn't seen, for example, the ubiquitous cardboard art at Occupy protests, marches, and fights. Now, are these doodles or merely political and social rants, or should they be taken more seriously? Are they really art? Are these often crudely painted signs uh, simply a further rift in our society because of their protests of social and financial inequities, or will they in some fashion serve to be able to heal this tear in the fabric. So the same problem of having art taken seriously and the need for healing has preceded the Occupy movement by a number of years, if not centuries, in what we call, or what some people call, the outsider or visionary art movement, along with the artists and the people creating it. Uh, they are untrained, uh, they are outside of the mainstream, does that sound familiar? But they're still, they still have something important to say to those who will listen. So let's see if we can draw some parallels and distinctions and also do some worthwhile promotion for the lady by the name of Candace Brokaw, uh, B-R-O-K-A-W, Candace, who we are reaching today at, at her home on Long, Long Island, New York. So welcome to the show today, Candy. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you for having me. Well, happy to have you here. And I want to start first with a bit of your own history and credentials so that people can get an idea of you and why you are presently attempting to gain attention and raise money for a documentary film, which I believe is based uh, on the Survivors Art Foundation, which you started and which is doing fundraising, fundraising now on Kickstarter. So first, tell me a bit about yourself as an artist and a survivor, and then about this film. Okay, that's great. Um, well, let's see. I, I found art. Uh, uh, 20 years ago, uh, I had, you know, drawn a little bit as a kid. But uh, 38, when I was 38, I'm 58 now. 20 years ago, I had a breakdown, and art was a, a huge healing tool for me. Uh, I'm a survivor of sexual abuse and rape, and art really helped me purge a lot of negative feelings that I couldn't really articulate with within the normal therapy model. And although that's very helpful too, art is something I use 24 hours a day. Being a compulsive artist, it helps me purge and really help me heal. So I, in 1997, I founded the Survivors Art Foundation, which is a not-for-profit organization that facilitates uh, helping artists, both visionary, um, well, me, um, let me go backtrack. Um, visual artists, performing artists, musicians, and literary artists, and uh, even people that have never really picked up a brush, just to help them heal. And our population consists of cancer survivors, AIDS, a whole cross section of physical and mental disabilities. And we just, uh, I'm rambling on because I'm very enthusiastic about the organization, but. Uh, it's really reached far and wide from the United Nations to Capitol Hill to all over the world. We have members in, in uh, 49 states and 24 countries. So that's what got me into art. And now I consider myself uh, an outsider visionary artist. I've shown all over the world, and I really enjoy it. And uh, I really enjoy helping other people. Uh, get the exposure and the education about what art can do for you. Well, then let me uh, ask, what is the relationship of this film that's coming out to the to the work that you're doing? And what is oh the name goodness. of the film? This uh, film oh. is amazing. Snowflake Video Productions has been working on this film following uh, different uh, exhibits and individual artists that are members of the foundations some wonderful musicians, some wonderful artists, and all sorts of events that we've done at the, like I said, the United Nations, all over some outreach projects with Native Americans, Totem Rhythms, and they're trying to raise $3,000 on Kickstarter, and there are only 10 days left to do this. Any donation, $5, whatever, would be a great help 
to be able to edit this film and bring it out to the general public, both through film festivals and ultimately to clinicians, hospitals, and individuals, because it's so unbelievably inspiring and uh, motivating to see how different people, whether it's a blind musician or an artist who lost uh, a limb uh, at a young age and still, you know, have great, great art, great attitudes, and are, are really whole healed people. Well, then, then what we need to do here, Candy, is to provide some right at the very beginning so that people don't have to wait till the end of this conversation. They can mm -hmm. get a pen and write down some of the websites that you think that people would benefit by oh, going to. Oh, that would be wonderful. Well, if you go to kickstarter.com and you put in raw visions, R-A-W-V-I-S-I-O-N-S, -S, art of survival, you will get our... Um, our film and there's a great there's actually a two part watch the whole both films that are up there that are the promo on that and then survivors art foundations uh individual website is uh if you just google survivors art foundation we will come up it, you know it's http you know colon slash slash www survivors plural art foundation dot org no dots other than um you know the one dot and then my personal website with my personal art is uh, also http www.visionary-art.net. And, um, and if you put my name in Candace Brokaw, uh, it'll, it'll all come up anyway. But we'd love to get you to Kickstarter because 10 days is ticking. And that, this film really needs to come out and reach the broad population. Uh, so that's great. Thank you, Jerry, for letting me put in the shameless promotions, but it's we are, not self. <laughs> we are we are very we are very much in favor of shameless or shameful. It makes no difference to us. We will promote them. Shameless in my case. No shame. No shame. It's for a good cause. We don't it's for have a good cause. It's not in our vocabulary. Great. So, let's talk a little bit about you and I want uh, the audience to know uh for for reasons of disclosure, that I am not only a friend and a fan of yours, but that my wife and I have collected your art for the last several years. Uh, my wife having discovered your art and then uh, being invited to your home, which is literally an art museum. <laughs> All your works, I mean, every wall is covered. I want the audience to know that. And we could not help but fall in love with the work that you do. Now, when, when I talked to you about doing this show and I said I'd like to talk to you about how this relates to the Occupy movement, uh, you found that probably not going to be true. Now, I, of course, have disagreed with you. So where does the Occupy movement artist come into your world as being sort of a reflection of or a continuation of people in pain that are expressing themselves and need to be heard? Okay. Um, first of all, just to give a little technical history, outsider art, by definition, is an untrained individual uh, but with skills. Um, so somebody who like Grandma Moses, who does very primitive, you know, southern art that looks like actual things like hills and pigs and barns could be considered outsider art, or somebody who draws really wild, insane visions inside their head from usually it started as art group in the psychiatric hospitals in Europe turn of the century. Uh, that name has gotten become genericized into visionary art now because outside art is so broad. Visionary usually is somebody that's channeling internal visions or external visions. My internal visions are uh, I draw a spontaneous stream of consciousness. Nothing's really planned, although sometimes I will pick the size of the canvas or the size of the paper. But whatever comes out of my fingers comes out of my fingers, and one thing leads to another, and it becomes a giant connected raw shock test. Uh, people can interpret it however they want to, whereas I can see it, and it's not abstract. It's a lot of people. Um, so if, when I'm trying to describe it without showing it over the air, um, it's a lot of twisted faces, people sharing eyes, mouths, but it's not scary. A lot of it's funny, funny creatures, but they represent to me, my mother, my father, um, 
self-deprecating myself as a pig, snakes, and it's all my husband. Everything is kind of all in there, and it's pretty. It's pretty. It's weird. Well, people, uh, people think it's really, but um, I do know a couple of outsider artists that do have political agendas that they bring forth in their work, so it's not unheard of, and there probably are more than I know of. Uh, who are also untrained and are self-taught artists. Matt Seesaw as one, and uh, Brendan um, Burke. I've actually seen him on television picketing for the Occupy um, uh, protests in Manhattan. Um, uh, and Jim Bloom from Pennsylvania are three um, outsider artists that are recognized uh, that are you know have political you know, impact on what they say. So um, I well, think I think what it is is outsider art is coming, not only, you know, visionary art, is it's a compulsion that's coming out of you that you're, and it generally comes from some kind of, not always, but some kind of trauma or psychiatric or something, um, something that is really, you know, just erupting from you well, now. Well, let me let me let me address no, that. Go go go. Sorry. Because we did talk about the fact earlier um, that, in a way, these are internal demons that are being dealt with by the yes, by the yes, by the right. outsiders. Yes. Whereas mm -hmm. whereas, mm -hmm. whereas there are external demons <laughs> that are being yes yes <laughs> yes, yes That's right. That's right. Yes, minor internal demons. Um, many times, uh, there's one guy who draws aliens only that are from Mars, and those are his external demons. But occupiers could be drawing the uh, external demons of Wall Street and bankers and suits, and the demons that plague them and have infiltrated their life, their brains, their heart, their soul. And by purging them out is their way of, uh, it's a storytelling process, it's a validation process. And that's, I think that's one of the biggest differences with outsider visionary artists. They're not painting something pretty. They're not usually painting a pretty scene that's going to be a landscape that's going to match the color of your couch. They're painting their guts onto the canvas. And it's, it can be pretty. It can be aesthetic. But it's their message. It's their feelings and thoughts and uh you know, and usually you want that shared so it can be validated. So whether it's a political protest about the economy or whether, I mean, I have a political protest uh, that's about how the economy has cut so much health insurance and so much mental health coverage for people that desperately need it. And you have all these war veterans coming back unable to heal, which from a war that should never have been, and should not still be going on, in my opinion, personal well, opinion, not so, the foundation. So and then also all these, you know, abuse, domestic violence is up, sexual abuse is up, child abuse is up, child death is up since this economic downturn because people can't cope and people have no resources and they're becoming less and less. Well, I would and say that the Occupy movement or the foot soldiers that are out there that are clamoring for a... a a fair shake and for uh, for for nationalized uh, health care and, and all the things that make life easier for the 99% that the 1% never have to worry about. But let me go to, back to the idea of artists and art uh, and so people can research for themselves to see these comparisons. There's a website called OccupyArtist.org and they identify themselves as a uh, quote, stack of artists, musicians, writers, thespians, chanteurs, crafters, filmmakers, designers, composers, photographers, thinkers, etc. Uh, doesn't that sort of sound a lot like outside artists, too? Um, once again, you know, in a technical, the technical terminology of outside art is that it's untrained. Uh, but um, the visionary is that it's in exceptions of mental illness, exceptions of compulsion, and that it's coming from very much from within. But, you know, um, it, it's, it's, a, it's a curator's uh, definition dilemma that is constantly being argued, even when you're dealing with people with de developmental disabilities and autism that are in in-house art therapists working with them, but they're still doing their own work. Are they being influenced? It's, it's, really about staying true to yourself. 
you know, yes. about staying, yes. having your personal uh, insights spilling out onto the canvas as opposed to somebody else who's telling you use a little more red or blue or somebody else's idea. It's really about the truism of your, of your work. Well, there's... And, we're, you know, we're surrounded by media, so there obviously are some influences subconsciously, but, you know, hopefully your subconscious is strong enough with enough of your own agenda that it comes out. Well, I know that uh, being an appreciator of outsider artists and outside art, uh, just as one individual, uh, I have favorite places to go to learn more about that. And one of my favorite websites, uh, besides your own, of course, is uh, the American Visionary Art Museum in Baltimore. And oh, my God, yes. Isn't oh that fabulous? Goodness. AVAM.org is where uh, people should go. Everybody should go there at least once in their life. I mean, it is the best, the biggest outsider art museum in this country. And they do a yearly exhibit, and then they have a building next door to it that has a permanent exhibit. And it's just fabulous. <laughs> what well, is that? Is there any other favorite that you have that uh, you might recommend to people? Well, oh. the yearly Outsider Art Fair in January in New York City is a three-day event where Outsider Art Galleries come in from all over the world, from France, from England, from Japan, all over the U.S., and present... Uh, current and um, past outside artists that have, you know, died, and it's just, it's just an amazing array of creativity and a real cross section of different mediums and uh, all kinds of uh, outsider and visionary art. That is one of my favorites. And you also show there yourself. I uh, yes, I show there every year through uh, Gallery Olaf in the Netherlands. I just did an exhibit with them uh, this year, and. Um, well, let's, current, let's talk about saying, let's okay, talk about ahead. something else that's important to me because when you talk about your ideas going out on canvas and it's as large as the canvas is, I also know that you completed something in uh, the Bronx, which is pretty amazing. I'd like to have you tell people about, and uh, we can complete our conversation today on 15 minutes of fact with that story. Oh, okay, great. Yes, my um, current current project, both personal and Survivors Art Foundation is an incredible outsider art and community installation of uh, art mosaics in the Bronx. It's called the Hayden Lord Memorial Park. And it's after a, a young man who was uh, only six years old and passed away from Tay-Sachs disease, Hayden Lord. But this park is um, just an amazing project. Uh, that's a collaborative with Bronx Pro Real Estate, who has donated the land for this and uh, is working with us funding for um, Dream Yards, which is a nonprofit organization that works with inner city children in the schools doing art and poetry and Survivors Art Foundation and myself in terms of the design of the, pro of the project. And we're doing mosaic uh, benches that are like Gaudi's um, snake-like serpentine uh, curved benches and planters with children. We're doing outreach projects with inner city children, taking well, broken plates and tiles and making mosaic planters. Well, I've, I've seen some pictures of this. I haven't actually been to the physical site yet. Is there any place where... Uh, our listener can go to actually see them, or maybe the post this sometime. There are there are the they're putting up a website for it on Facebook. I don't think it's launched yet, but if you keep uh, an eye out for um, the Hayden Lord Memorial Park, it will be out on Facebook shortly. It's going to have a grand opening in the fall, and all summer long there are outreach projects scheduled to complete the mosaic wall in the back. We're planting an organic garden, and uh, it's just an amazing. It, it's merging art and nature in the middle of the Bronx, in the middle of the cement Bronx, now and for, it is just a beautiful <laughs> flower. It is a beautiful flower, and I'm curious how the person that I met several years back, who is doing nothing larger than nine inches by twelve inches, <laughs> <laughs> how in the world did you manage to fill the wall, the side of a well, how many stories? How many stories is That's that? That's very true. Yes, six stories, sixty feet high. I I was so agoraphobic. I really only drew on my bed, on my belly, on little pieces of postcard-sized paper, 
And every year I've been getting a little bigger and a little stronger. And now we've taken over and I've kind of come out of the uh, closet, my bedroom, (laughs) (laughs) and taken over this giant park and walls of these two buildings. And it's that's what art can do. Art can heal you. It really can. Back to the healing part. I mean, it really has. And I've met wonderful people like yourself, Jerry, and along the way. You know, it's just been it, it, a wonderful journey, a well, wonderful let, journey. Well, let's cap off our conversation with, with that wonderful description of the last and the largest piece that you're doing. I, I fear for the Sphinx. I have a feeling it's going to be covered by some of your uh, your, <laughs> your drawings if it doesn't watch out. So this is Jerry Ashton signing off 15 Minutes of Fact with WGRNRadio.com and appreciating very much the time spent with us by Candace Brokaw. And be sure to visit the Survivors Art Foundation and be sure to go to Kickstarter and contribute to this wonderful cause. Thank you so much for listening.